Hey guys, welcome to the part two of the C Sharp beginner programming series. So today I'm going to be focusing on triggers or trigger events. And this is one of the most common things that you will actually find in games design or anything that you will see in any type of game, whether it be AAA or whether it be indie. This entire series is not going to be the core fundamental of every step of programming. It's going to be more of the things that I think that you need to cover to be able to get straight into developing games and the most common things you will use day to day and it's what I use myself. So we'll get straight into it this time is that I'm sure a lot of you are aware but if I'm going basis wise to use or to start with doing collision events we need to actually add a trigger. So what we can do is we can go game object 3D object and we can add a cube and our cube is going to act as our trigger and what you want to do with the trigger is make sure that it's big enough for everyone or for your player to be able to walk through and activate so that's plenty big enough so what we can do in the inspector is we can remove the mesh renderer so if we click the drop down choose remove uh, mesh renderer you can still see the box collider which is encapsulated there what you need to make sure that you do is have it as ticked is trigger and you need to make sure that whatever controller you're using needs to be uh, have its own tag of player or whatever tag you're going to use but we're going to reference that in script now first thing you want to do is create a new script a new c sharp script and we're going to call this trigger event and then what we're going to do there is we'll open up in mono develop so like i was saying one of the most common things that you'll find is a trigger event and I will start by showing you how to do it. So when we get this to um, starting methods, we don't need those. I like to bring the um, two encapsulating curly brackets down because we always need those in when we're inside this initial class. So what we want to do to begin with is write void. And void is always the thing that we most often start off a common uh, method with and then we want to write on trigger enter so that's saying that this is our initial method and we're going to name this um, well it's a common method type of on trigger enter then you want to start by opening up your brackets writing collider and then after collider we can have any name we want because we're going to reference that in script in a moment so we can just have that as other which is most commonly used then close the brackets up and then what you can do below there is add two curly brackets now to quickly briefly go over this again is you can hover over many things and you can see that the void is the method the most common one of the most common method types we can have is on trigger enter then in the brackets we're giving some parameters to the method and we're saying that collider is the thing that we're going to be looking at so it's going to be the component that we're looking at and then we're going to give it a name which we need to reference so then when this just means that when we hit a the on trigger enter we need to do something and then in here we can say if and then we can open brackets other dot compare tag open brackets in quotes player close that up with a quotation mark and a bracket and then another bracket and then what we can do is add two curly brackets below but sometimes it doesn't like to format it the way I like and you always need the curly brackets underneath everything to encapsulate another statement that you're going to write so if I've got my initial method we've got two brackets and if you click at the beginning of the bracket you will see it highlights the bottom one and there's always um, a left facing bracket at the top and then a right facing bracket toward the bottom and I just like to indent the code according to how I'm going to write it so say I was going to write it in here you see sharp um, scripting just does this for you it will already indent it here then if I um, go across there it'll automatically indent it again for me but because we've got this 
I'll go into if statements in another tutorial more uh, prominently, but we want to say the if. So if just means as it suggests, if we give it this criteria, we will do it if the criteria is met. Then what we're saying is that when we open the brackets, we're saying that if the other, so if the other, which is the collider which we'd given it, we're going to compare the tag and we're going to search for the tag of player like we put on our player previously. And then from there, I'll just write a comment. Well, I'll actually write a debug line in here. So debug.log, open brackets, and we'll just write hello. And what that does is a debug.log just will show it in the error reporter or the debug inspector. And we're just writing in the brackets, in quotes, hello. So it'll just output that for us. And we always need to add a semicolon after any particular statement that we're going to say, as long as it's not an if statement and it's not a method. So what we'll do is we'll save that. We'll go on the drop down. Now we will you go to our cube, which was our trigger. You can rename that if you like. We can add the trigger event to that cube specifically and what I will do is I will play the game and you'll notice if I then walk towards the collider you want to look down at the bottom where I'll bring the um, actual debugger up in a second and we'll walk towards it and we walk to the collider and you can see that it reported hello so we know that it's actually working Now, if I take that off what I could do is I could just quickly add a mesh renderer to that cube so we can see it so that was the sort of simplicity of writing your sort of first key function and this is the fundamental of completing any mission doing anything in a game that you will find and you can do any number of things within the trigger event and if you write two sort of forward slashes you c this is just a comment so you can write whatever you want this means i want to say hello for instance and I will show you a different example so it's going to be on trigger exit so this is going to be a different version of a most commonly used method type so like we've done before you can practice this along but you can see that it's going to be very simple we'll start right void on trigger exit then we're going to open up the brackets write collider again then we're going to say other close that up put two curly brackets below again one left one right it will have already indented our code we'll say that if other dot compare tag open brackets in quotes player close that quote up and add two brackets then what we'll do is add two curly brackets below there and I will explain, maybe I didn't mention before, is that you can see this bracket here at the beginning, in in the um, beginning of the if statement, and you will see that these two brackets are around the player. And you need the bracket on the end to so sort of finish it off. If I click on this first bracket, you can see this bracket will end it. So say I show you this, you will notice that that end bracket meets with that bracket, but this bracket has no sort of um, let's say a friend to go along with it so you need to add another bracket at the end to encapsulate the full if statement so we're just saying that if other so if the collision that we're going to detect is the player then we're going to want to do something else so again we can write debug dot log and then we um, start by opening a bracket in quotes we can say maybe we could say goodbye and then we can close that up and add a semicolon and then if I save that out again this is all well and good so when we enter we expect it to say hello then when we exit that same collider we expect it to say goodbye so if I now press play again you'll notice that you can see my pink collider there if we walk towards it you can see that it said hello and we walked out of it in the same instance it said goodbye and again if I, if we walk through it as many times as we like 
and it will just keep doing that forever until we give it something else to do. Now, one last example is, I won't go through this entire example because it's exactly the same, is we can add void on trigger stay in exactly the same way as the others. And all um, on trigger stay does is, essentially what it suggests is, if you stay inside the trigger, then you can do something, because enter is, it will only do the statement here or the lines of code that you've given it when you enter it. This on trigger exit will only do it when you exit that specific collider. And on trigger stay is that as long as you're all as long as you're actually inside the collider and staying inside the collider. So there's a few things, those three sort of methods are really important. And I use those day to day in doing things, whether they're missions, whether you need to activate something else, whether you need to activate another game object, whether you need whatever you need to do. You've just got to remember that you start off the method, you give it the collider type, you give it an, you give it a name, you have the two curly brackets up and below, you have a simple if statement, which I'll go into um, in future videos, you reference by saying that the other collider that we're going to give, we're going to look for the collider, the tag of player, and it needs to be in brackets and encapsulated for the entire if statement. Then you're going to need, again, two curly brackets above and below, left and right facing. And then you can write whatever lines of code you want in between there for whenever you enter, exit, or you stay in a particular trigger. So really, that's just the fundamentals of activating triggers. And just remember that your collider needs to be is trigger, and whatever you're interacting with, it needs to be tagged as player or whatever tag we're going to be giving it specifically here. So thanks again for watching. Hope this helped everybody sort of give the next steps of beginner C sharp. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.